As the new IndyCar Series looks for a new race car design for 2012, several designs unveiled this week. But the real shocker, it was the Delta Wing concept unveiled at the Chicago Auto Show on Wednesday. The car designed by Target Ganassi racing engineer Ben Bowlby, and it has support for most of the current team owners and from Firestone. Also on hand, IndyCar champ Scott Dixon, Dario Franchitti, the new IndyCar CEO Randy Bernard, and our own Robin Miller. Chip Ganassi has graciously agreed to stick around to answer one quick question from Daytona. Chip, you say that this car, which your guy designed, is more than just a prototype. It's a different way of doing business. What does that mean before I let you get back to the celebration? Well, thanks, Dave. It's, uh, here's what it means. It's, 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 it's half the weight, half the drag, uh, half the cost, half the horsepower, and it goes the same speed. That's what you need to know about that car. It'll, it'll still race around at 230 miles an hour, but it's, like I said, half the weight, half the drag, can half you, the cost. Can you make many odds on whether it will ultimately become the 2012 car? Yeah, who knows? You know, I, I sure hope it gets some traction. I mean, I think, I think that, you know, we need, we need a, a shot in the arm in that series to, uh, and, you know, and, and we think that car is something that the owners want and, and something that the... Uh, the teams need, and uh, you know, and we'd like to we'd we'd like to give it a shot. Yes. All right. First things first. You go get back to the celebration. Thanks very much for giving us that extra bit of time, and congratulations again on a great job by your guy Jamie McMurray. With Thank that, uh, let us bring in our IndyCar expert Robin Miller, who's been standing by up in Indy. Uh, Robin, good to see you. I missed our little get-togethers here all year. The the new car has taken some real heat on the IndyCar board at SpeedTV.com. Futuristic sex toy, one of those uh, descriptions that caught my eye. And some of the critics have called you out specifically for your involvement in the project. So, A, what is your involvement? And, B, what do you think of the car? My involvement? Well, I mean, Chip called me up and said, come have lunch. I went up to a shop, and here were all these car owners. And they said, and here's Ben Bowlby, and here's the model. And they said... Sign this confidentiality agreement. We're going to show you the, the plan for 2012. So I did. And uh, I shocked Michael Andretti and kept it a secret for five and a half months and didn't write about <laughs> it or talk about it. I just kept saying on my little mailbag every Wednesday, it's very different. It's very radical. And what do I think of it is it's, it's a culture shock. But the IndyCar, IndyCar needs the culture changed. I mean, it's in big trouble. I mean, there's not enough cars or money or sponsors. We've all heard this before. I don't know if Ben's car is going to be the, the answer. I don't know if it's going to go around the corner. I mean, it, it, it won't, we won't know that until August. But I do know this. All his other ideas need to be embraced. A global four-cylinder engine, which might get three or four manufacturers. Chip's already heard from a couple of them. Cheaper cars by 50%. Cars built in Indianapolis instead of Italy. There are so many good things about Ben's pro proposal. When Chip says it's just not the car, that's what he means. It's just not the car. It's the whole overall concept. And Ben Bulby deserves a tip of the hat for doing some serious thinking about what can make this thing better and sustain it. Well, he, he had to run, and I didn't really get the answer that I was looking for there. I don't think he – he told me why he thought the car was a good idea. What I'm curious is, is this business where he says that what this is going to do is put another layer of engineering expertise from the paddock between the sanctioning body and the car manufacturers. I don't know what that means. Can you elaborate on that? Yeah, I think it's a nice way of saying the owners are tired of getting – raked over the coals by Delara and, and, and Honda. Here's the thing. How can a car that's seven years old still cost $650,000? An engine that's detuned leases for $1.3 million. I, I, I think here's what the deal is. I think they all got together and said, look, the IRL hasn't done anything about lowering the cost. We've been sitting here for four or five years. We have no plan for, for, for the future. We keep getting pushed back every year. So we're going to take things in our own hands, and we're going to try and come up with a plan that's going to work for everybody. And the interesting thing is, this is where you need the engineers and the manufacturers to sit down with Brian Barnhart and say, this is what we need to be looking at. This is what we need to do. Barnhart's not an engineer. He doesn't under, have any expertise in that area, and neither does the rest of his tech staff. They need to listen to people like Ben Bulby. And, and I think the thing that's interesting is, as Ben Bulby says all the time, this isn't going to be a spec car because spec car, I mean, the Indy 500, the life has been sucked out of it by spec car racing. How do you get it back? You get it back by making it more available to more people. And all, all the Delta Wing design is, Dave, is, is a way to go about building the car. And Bulby said over and over again, this isn't exclusive. This is open to anybody that, that has the expertise to build race cars and parts. We want this to be a community project. The more, the merrier. We don't want the cars to look alike. Okay, I'm, I'm a little confused about that. We've, they, they have been working on this 
you know, mock-up for a long time. And then sort of abruptly this week, just before this car was unveiled, we heard from, uh, from Delara and Swift with drawings of what they might have to offer in 2012. So back to your point about spec cars, what, what are we talking about? Are we talking about maybe Delta Wing? You can run a Delta Wing car. You can run this Delara drawing. You can run this Smith draw, uh, uh, Swift drawing. What, or, or will it be different people building the Delta Wing car? How is this not a spec car series anymore? Well, I don't know that that's, it won't be a spec car series. I think in a perfect world, you just hit it. I want all of them to be able to build a car. And they keep talking about, well, you know, it's too expensive to have more than one manufacturer. More expensive than it's been the last seven years? Give me a break. They haven't cared about how much it costs to go racing. And, and I think the thing that's interesting about this whole concept is, Dave, is that, you know, 16th and Georgetown was built on, 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 free, on free thinking and on, and on new ideas and things like that. And I think... Like I said to Bobby the other day, Ben, what if everybody, you know, what if Delora and, and Swift, they want to build a car, can you all run together? And, they, and he wants to control the horsepower by fuel flow. So if you had a six-cylinder engine or eight-cylinder or a four-cylinder and you had different cars and it was controlled by fuel flow, I mean, give it a try. That's why this next set of rules is the most important thing that's going to happen maybe in the history of IndyCar racing because it's teetering on the brink right now, and it's got to have some smart people making smart decisions to keep this thing moving forward and to get more people involved. We saw the uh, Delara, the red car, the Swift, the black car, the Delara, clearly an evolution of what they're, they're building now, and the Swift, um, a less radical departure for sure than the, uh, than the Delta Wing. What about the fan reaction? Should we take what we read on the Internet seriously? I so rarely do. Uh, should we take it seriously in this case? Do you expect that, the, that, that this is just too radical, that the fans can't get their heads around this? I think the old school people like me are just appalled. And, and I've got about 300 letters in my mailbag already for this week. And it's probably about... It's, it's, it's closer to 50-50 than I thought it would be. There's a lot of people are like, this is what needs to happen. A clean sheet of paper, let's start from scratch. Other people are like, I'll never watch IndyCar racing again. You can't do this to us. So let's say this. Let's say they all get together and sit down in a room and say, you know what? Let's take, some of, let's take Ben's, a lot of his concepts, but let's put them to Swift's 23A design, which is a pretty cool looking car, and let's go down the road and, and try and open this thing up a little bit. At least, at least you'd have a chance maybe to get more people involved. And I think... That's, to me, Dave, that's the, that's the key to the whole thing is how do you get the thing to grow? There were more people at the Chicago Auto Show, more magazines, national magazines, to look at an IndyCar the week of the Daytona 500. IndyCar was a big buzzword. Whether it was criticism or praise, people were talking about it. And I think that's important, that's not to lose sight. It's become so irrelevant to have an IndyCar anymore, and they all have looked the same and nobody seems to care. So how do you get people to care again, and more importantly, is it more important to get new young fans who might think this car is zoomy or keep the ones you got now? All right, Miller, thank you very much. Keep us posted on that. We're going to go to commercial break by adding this to our list of Golden Corral questions of the week. What do you think of the Delta Wing Project's proposed IndyCar of the future? Do you love it, hate it? Let us know. And tell us why you feel the way you do. What do you think of the Delta Wing IndyCar? We'll take a commercial break and come back with eye candy and Timothy Peters. Don't go anywhere.